What is happening everybody? My name is Michael and if you have a small shed or a garage that you're looking to heat things up in, then this video is for you. I'm also going to show you how I installed this 30 amp 240 volt receptacle to supply power to this bad boy. It's the 2-in-1 240 volt electric garage heater by New Air. And if you just simply want to possibly watch me burn down my shed or possibly electrocute myself, then this video is also for you. It's going to be a lot of fun and I hope you learned something. So let's make something cool. No, let's make something hot. <laughs> I am very excited about this video because it means that we get to get more heat in the shed. And if you watch the channel, you know how hard it is for me to heat this shed in these Michigan winters. So if we get more heat in this shed, that means the videos don't have to slow down this winter. And I can't tell you how bad I want to replace this old wonky little heater. It does nothing for me. It takes the edge off a little bit, but that's it. So New Air reached out to me, wanted to know if they could send me a free heater as long as I had it in one of our videos. So uh, I, I think it's important to say that this is not a sponsored video. So I can say whatever I want. <laughs> With that being said, I'm very excited about this. I have high hopes. And this guy is 240 volts and can heat up to 500 square feet. This shed is only a 12 by 10. So we're only talking about 120 square feet. So this really should do the job. It can be freestanding or ceiling mounted or wall mounted. But what I'm really excited about is this. Remote. <laughs> see, some mounting bracketry. So this this bracket allows us not only to ceiling mount it or wall mount it, but it allows us to mount it on an angle as well. If you don't like the sound of styrofoam, plug your ears right now. <laughs> All right. So it also has digital temperature control. I believe you can also set a timer and set a thermostat. Now, like I said, this is 240 volt. They gave me an option to get 120 volt or the 240 volt. I chose the 240 volt. But with the heavy duty comes the heavy duty plug. So what that means is we're gonna have to add a 30 amp breaker to our breaker panel and run a 10 gauge wire to this special plug here. I believe this is a 6-30R receptacle. Now, if this heater ends up working out great for us, there's going to be a link down below and there's gonna be a personalized code right here. And I can't tell you how bad I need heat in this shed because I've had to grow a winter beard and this thing is getting rough. It's getting weird. In the morning when I wake up, it looks like this. So I can't wait to trim this sucker down. All right, let's get to installing this new line. Before I even touch this panel, I want to make something perfectly, perfectly clear. I am not a licensed electrician. I know my way around a fuse box, but if you are uncomfortable doing something like this, please hire a professional electrician. And if you are going to attempt this, please do your research, read the books, ask a professional. I don't want to be responsible for burning anybody's house down or anybody's shed or anybody's she shed. Somebody burned down my she shed. Nobody burned down your she shed, Cheryl. Well, my she shed's on fire. Electrical work is something that you want to take very, very seriously. This video is going to be for educational purposes only. So please be safe. Please do your research and possibly think about hiring a professional. I don't plan on burning my shed down either, but, uh, just to be safe. Now let's rip this panel down and see what's inside. Looks confusing and intimidating, right? This is still live, by the way. I don't want to touch anything in here just yet. But even though this is just a small sub panel, this is set up just like a regular breaker box. I got my main power coming in here 
my black wire, my hot lead that's running this side of the panel, my red hot wire, which is running the other side of the panel. It has a neutral and ground bus bar. Some panels will actually have a separate neutral bar and a separate ground bar, but they're all going in the same place. I've got my individual breakers for my different circuits. I've got a 15 amp. 15 amp is usually used for your, your common receptacles or lighting. This one's simply running my lights. I have two 20 amp breakers for the heavy duty stuff like my tooling or my table saw and router table. This one is running these four receptacles here on its own separate circuit. On another circuit, I have another 20 amp breaker running my table saw and my router table. And that's really it. That's really all there is to it. Now for the project we have today, we're gonna install this bad boy. It's a 30 amp breaker. It's gonna take up two spots and we're gonna put it right here in this space. Now, before I work in here, I'm gonna go ahead and install the receptacle box, run the wire from the receptacle box. And then before I run any wires in here, then I'm gonna cut the power to the sub panel. So let's get to it. Choose a good location for the receptacle box that your wire can reach. I'm using a single gang new construction box and I simply hammer it home. Punch out a hole and pull the line through. I like to pull out about a foot of line to give myself plenty of wire to work with with the receptacle. Don't skip out on that. Then we're gonna run our 10 gauge wire all the way down. I'm gonna drill a hole with a 9 16 or a half inch spade bit or a paddle bit. We're gonna come up on the other side and then come up underneath the panel to hit our 30 amp breaker. By the way, is anybody else just feeling cold just watching my breath? I told you it gets cold in this shit. I secured the wire to the studs with 9 16 wire staples. Now, before we go any further, I just want to give you a quick lesson on wires just to get you familiarized with them and what they do. We have a 14 2, 12 2, and a 10 2. Your 14 2 is going to be your most common wire meant for it, like low voltage stuff like lighting, and that goes to a 15 amp breaker. Then your 12 2 is going to be for bigger things that draw more current like tools or table saws. That will go to a 20 amp breaker. This big daddy, what we're going to be working with, the 10 2, goes to bigger things that draw a lot more current like appliances or heaters. This goes to a 30 amp breaker. Now what they all have in common, the black wire is always the hot wire. White wire is always the neutral wire and the copper is always the ground. Now there's also a 10 3, which again, black wire for hot white wire for neutral, and the red is also always gonna be the hot wire, and of course the ground. Now, the first number, the 14, represents the gauge, the size of the wire. The smaller the number, the thicker the gauge. The bigger the number, the smaller the gauge. Now, the second number is how many wires it has plus the ground. So, 14 two, two wires plus the ground, 14 gauge, 12 two, two wires, 12 gauge, plus the ground. This guy is 10 three. Three wires plus the ground, 10 gauge. Now, let's strip. Not that kind of stripping. Wire stripping. Now, you could just go ahead, use your knife, cut the jacket, then try to cut around the insulation and, and then try to slip the jacket off but you run the risk of cutting the insulation when you cut the jacket open, and you also run the risk of cutting yourself too. Instead, this tool is super cheap and makes your life super easy. Just simply run the jacket through here. Tear open the jacket. Cut that off with a side blade. And you will not cut the insulation open with this guy. Then take your multi-tool, little wire stripper. You can actually match these numbers up with the gauge wire that you're working with. In this case, a 10 gauge. Simple as that. I'm not gonna cut what I don't wanna cut and uh, uh, I'm not going to slice my finger open. 
I will, I'll leave a link in the description below for uh, both these tools. Quick side note, if you're planning on sheathing your walls and covering your stud cavities like I am, you can use this regular insulated wire. But if you're planning on leaving your stud cavities exposed, you either have to run metal conduit or use the wire that's already protected by the metal sleeves. Just like we talked about, use the cable ripper to strip the jacket off. Cut all three wires to a more manageable length, then using the appropriate slots, strip about a half inch of insulation off the wire. With our 30 amp receptacle in hand, flip it over and locate the hole marked ground. Insert the ground until you feel it bottom out, then tighten it down. Do the same thing with the white and black wires in the remaining slots, making sure they're properly seated and properly tightened down. Fold the wires into the receptacle box in a way that you do not pinch the wires. Secure the receptacle, then finish it off with a fancy plate. All right, before I run this wire up into the fuse box, this is where I wanna stop and I wanna cut the power to this fuse box. Don't mess around with this, guys. Don't mess around. So let's go into the house and switch off the breaker. Locate the correct breaker and shut it down. For safety, clearly mark the breaker box. Get yourself a good work light so you can see what you're doing. Feed your wire through a new knockout or an available non-metallic clamp and secure it. Using our nifty wire ripper, strip the outer insulation all the way down to the box. With our 30 amp breaker in hand, we are going to install the cleat first, then snap it into place. I like to install the ground wire first. I run my ground wire up to the neutral ground bus bar, making sure that it doesn't touch anything metallic on its way there. Cut it to length and secure it in place. Run the remaining wires to the breaker, cutting them to length and removing a half inch of insulation off the ends. Now before you yell at me, let's stop for a second. After asking several electricians, I found that there were two different ways to wire this. Option A was to wire the red hot lead and the black hot lead to the breaker and cap off the white neutral wire and tuck it away. I went with option B, connect the white wire and black hot lead to the breaker, turning the white neutral wire into a second hot lead. Depending on your area, this may or may not be to code. So make sure to check with local code first. After checking your work, scariest part, turning the breaker back on. I, I wasn't here when it went on. Did it spark? Are we good? I guess we'll see. Now let's install our heater. The hardware was pretty simple. Simply attach the bracket into solid wood, then attach the heater to the bracket with the provided nut and bolt. Plug it in and see what happens. Well, I don't need this anymore. And uh, I don't think I need this anymore. <laughs> Let's hope not. Well, I'm happy. I love it. And I think my favorite thing about this is that it's so compact 
and I could mount it however I wanted to. That way it doesn't get in the way of anything that I'm doing in the shed. It's got a, a digital readout, it's got a programmable thermostat, high and low fan speed, and I love that it has a fan to circulate the heat around the shed. I couldn't find that in any electrical models in the stores. You'd actually have to get right on the heaters to feel any kind of heat. <laughs> and I love that it's got a remote. 17,000 BTU, I believe, for the 240 volt model. But don't forget they have a 120 volt model so that you don't have to deal with this. I think the only thing that I don't like about it is uh, the fans are a little loud for me for doing YouTube videos, but if you're not doing YouTube videos in your shed, then it's actually kind of quiet. But I couldn't be happier. It got the shed to a very comfortable temperature in about 10 minutes, and it's very easy to use. So if you guys are interested in this, I'm going to leave a link down below. And Jasmine from New Air was able to get you guys $30 off if you use the discount code BUILDS. So thank you guys very much for watching my video. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about electrical work. Um, if you are a licensed electrician and you're watching this, please, I invite you to comment below. Uh, let me know what you thought. Did, did I do it right? Um, did I do it all wrong? <laughs> this should be fun. <laughs> but if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so, and I'll see you in the next video. I love you. <laughs> Ow! It's hot.